everyone. I fancied having another go at doing the footprints in the sand thing. Um, a bunch of people said, oh, why don't you tint the footprints a little bit? Well, I made a video of doing exactly that. But unfortunately, they got a bit messy. I didn't do it terribly well and I overdid the tint. And anyway, there they are. So I thought we'd have another go. So if you remember, the original problem was absolutely beautiful idea um, that Laura from Loose Screws came up with and uh, was very kindly said to me yeah go ahead and do it so thank you for that idea loose screws loose screws channel link is below now the problem was that you couldn't see the footprints terribly well so we said we'd tint them and as you can see from my previous attempt it didn't go so well now it, it is a good idea though it should work now this is the mold i used last time people have been asking me does it mark your mold well it's left these funny little shadows on it these are really old molds but it's left these funny little shadows, but there doesn't seem to be any texture to them. So I've used it once since, I just chucked in some clear, and it's uh, come out fine. So it's, it's as if it's marked the mould, but not actually left anything, any sort of indentation in it that's going to carry through. Anyway, I then had this other idea. I saw these moulds on uh, Amazon, little footprints, and I thought, oh, hmm, I wonder, I wonder. So all I've done is put some UV resin into the mould, tinted slightly as you can see and I have already cured it up mostly, still, it's still sticky, I mean I haven't gone to the trouble of really heavily curing it, you can see it's as sticky as anything. So I'm just trimming off any little surplus bits and I'm going to put them into the mould and see if they'll stick. <laughs> Probably not up that way. Let's try it that way. That side seems to be stickier. Yeah, I'd have preferred it up the other way, but let's go for it. So, bit toe. <laughs> sticking to fingers, not sticking to mould. Bit of a nuisance. Okay, let's try it with... Let's try it with my tweezers. This has got the five toes. It does look slightly odd because of it, but yeah, it does. It looks slightly odd without, doesn't it? Too. So what the hell? Right. These are meant to be baby footprints, I think. Of course, you could do this with your actual baby's footprints if you are brave enough to take a mould from his little feet or her little feet, baby's little feet. Keep them going like this. I can check the exact positions after. You can have to be careful not to scratch the mould with these tweezers but as usual, I am using this old mould that's uh, it's kind of one of my test pieces, so it's always a miracle if it survives anything, to be honest. Poor thing. Oh, now this one I made, obviously made quite a mess when I was producing it, so there's a lot to peel off around it. There we go. Little toe. So I think they're stuck down. I could have put a little bit of resin on the back to make sure. But hey, <laughs> we'll see, we'll soon see, they appear to be, they're not coming off with my glove. Now that is intentionally not central, it's intentionally off to the side, I just want to see if this works. So I'm going to just clean out one of my, ooh, that one's still wet, I was just going to clean out one of my little pots <coughs> and put some sand up again. my big tub of coral sand. Thank you to all those who've been sending me great long lists of different ways <laughs> that I've built up now, different ways of tinting sand. I haven't yet found one I hadn't already tried. They do all work. You can tint your sand, you can make it look whiter. Um, it, I just, you know what, I'm just a bit lazy and I find it just as easy to just work with coral sand to start with. Now I'm just going to need some resin mixed up. I'm trying to find a clean pot. There's a clean pot. 
we're going to use a deep pour resin like I did last time um, simply because it's going to go quite thick once the sand is in it anyway so a little bit of a deep pour resin which is a one, two to one mix there we go mixing it up the reason I'm using deep pour you know it's going to take longer to cure I know it is but um, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to I want it to be runnier and if you know if it takes a couple of days to cure so be it not a problem mixing it way too fast but then we're going to end up with a load of bubbles in it anyway and I like watching them pop <laughs> Incidentally, after the last use, I did clean this because I'd used a lot of alcohol in this mould. People have been asking me, does it dry your moulds out? I've not experienced that, to be honest. So, anyway, <laughs> I cleaned the mould out, had a good look at it. I could see there was these little shadows in it um, from where the footprints had been. Couldn't see any damage, really. I should be using alcohol in it again. Uh, as usual, I gave it a quick wipe round with some silicon lubricant anyway. Still not seeing a problem. I've had this. This must be one of my very first moulds. I've had it for years. Literally years. Um, it's been through hell and back, this poor mould has. Um, and I've always used either heat guns or... Uh, see what I mean about this going thick. Heat guns or... Uh, alcohol on it to pop the bubbles. I know I have wrecked moulds with heat guns, so, but so, but so you have to be so careful with those. You're better off with a long neck lighter, really. But um, I've not had any problems at all with the alcohol. So no, no, cheap moulds, expensive moulds, whatever. Um, just not any problems. But like I said, that could be because I tend to wipe them down with the. Uh, with the um oh the other one oh god I can't get my words out today with the uh silicon release spray which is basically a silicon lubricant afterwards anyway. Just sprayed some alcohol straight into the resin there in fact just to help to start shifting the shifting any bubbles that might come up and also thin it a little. And now I'm just gonna pour it in. Oh hang on though it was I added a bit of sparkle last time didn't I? That was nice. Let's add a bit of sparkle. Only a bit. <laughs> now I've mixed a lot more sand in the last time as well, so it's got quite a lot of weight to it. And as you can see, I haven't been stirring this up anywhere near long as you should. This is just for demo purposes. You should really stir it slowly, probably for three or four minutes or something. I don't know. Something like that. But anyway, we're just going to lob it in. Okay, here we go with the demold. Let's see what's happened. Just gonna loosen it around the edges first. Oh, suspense is killing me. Now whether they stayed stuck and <laughs> would you know it? It's worked. I'm pleased with that actually. Here we go. So yet yeah, again. Thanks to Loose Screws for flagging up this idea. Um, we finally got the result I was looking for. The footprint's a bit bigger than I intended, but if you remember that was using that mould and that was so easy, it was ridiculous. So, tiny bit of pigment in the sand, in the uh, clear UV resin, and jobs are good. And so if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, because that will tell me that uh, I'm barking up the right tree with all these things. And uh, of course, if you haven't already subscribed, the little button to enable you to do so is down here. Thanks again to all my subscribers and everyone who's supporting me in my YouTube mission. And uh, I look forward to seeing you for the next video. Bye all.